Using a student example, we're going to look through the th first three steps of the integrative thinking process. The first being articulate the models, the second being examine the models, and the third being exploring possibilities. What we have is student work from Lakeshore Collegiate Institute, school in the TDSB, and the students were kind enough to give us some of their work to look at. So in this first step, they're articulating the opposing models. And what we're really trying to highlight through these visuals is the tension that this ice cream company is facing. What you'll notice is that in this first one, they had to cross off the title. They initially named it the good one, which by default would have had the second model being the bad one. It is hard to believe that there's value in a bad model. And so we asked the students to rename the good model so that they could give themselves a chance to see the value in both. The second thing to note is how they've made their ideas very visual. The reason we ask for that is that a picture speaks a thousand words. It helps to create a shared understanding among all the members of their group, and using pictures and words to do that is very helpful. Our second and third task is deciding on the stakeholders and articulating the benefits. So what you can see from the student work is that they've chosen the customer, the employees, and the company as their three stakeholders. And what we have are what we've called benefit bubbles. And each benefit bubble is meant to be the voice of that stakeholder saying what is good for them of that model and how is that good produced. I want to show you one particularly great example from a student work. It says that from the customer perspective of why having a more traditional ice cream company is that I like that this model gives me financial flexibility because then I can spend money on other things. The reason this is a good benefit is that it helps to uncover why would somebody choose to spend money on a more traditional ice cream than on one that might be more ethical and might that be a key to unlocking new possibilities. Our third task is looking at the benefits of each of the models. This is what students have wonderfully named the pro-pro chart. We do this because we're looking to understand what is good about each of the opposing models so we can take the benefits and use those as the building blocks towards a better answer. A lot of times you make pro-con lists, right? What integrative thinking says is actually you want to do a pro-pro list. You want to look at what's good about the different options because if you're going to create a better answer, you want to take what's good about what currently exists and use that as your foundation for something better. Step two of the integrative thinking process is examine the models. And this is fundamentally a sense-making task. It's once I have the benefits in front of me, what do I understand now? What is something new, a new insight that I have that I didn't have before? And we ask students three ways to look at the benefits. And of course, there are so many more ways to sense-make than these three, but we have found these three to be a helpful first go. The first thing you'll notice is the hearts on some of the benefits. That's asking students, what are some things that you could not live without? Of all these benefits, what must you keep? You'll also see lines between ideas. This, these lines are about helping students make new connections. How are these benefits connected to one another? What causal relationships might there be? And then the third step, is, or the third question, is about saying, if you could synthesize this model in one word, what is the heart? What does this model have to offer? And we wanted to highlight one incredible insight that one group got to. So this one actually comes from John Polanyi Collegiate Institute, a group of grade 12 students. And in red, you can see this insight that there, there can be different ways to make your job pleasant, such as meeting new people or long-term commitment with the same coworkers. Why does this matter? Because initially, the way that this company created good working conditions they did it in a particular way. And these students are starting to question the assumption, is that the only way to do it? And by asking if that's the only way, they're starting to imagine what else might be possible to still make their employees happy. The second piece to show you is going back to the grade nine students from Lakeshore Collegiate, is the messy part at the bottom. This is when we ask students, to say, so what is one word that would summarize this model, that synthesizes it, the heart of what this model has to offer? And this is a step that can take 
a really quick, easy couple minutes, or actually we've seen groups take hours to do it. And this group still hasn't landed on their word. But you can see that they started with dreams and then really scratched that one out. Went to peace and scratched that out. And have maybe landed on relationships, but they still don't entirely know. And that's okay. Well, the key here is, is that the conversation that is getting them to synthesize is helping them to really dig into what is the benefit that this model has to offer. The third step in the integrative thinking process is exploring possibilities. And this is about starting to imagine what might a better answer look like? What else might be possible? And so with this particular group, they use their two synthesized words to create one of the pathways to integration. And they created a new question. How might we build an entirely new model that generates legacy and quality? They moved away from the tension being about, is it about still having an ethical company or having no ethics at all? but rather recognizing that their challenge is about promoting the legacy of the company as well as maintaining the quality of their product. And once they had that question, they were able to start brainstorming new possibilities and new ideas for what a better answer might look like. What you see in the integrative thinking process from start to finish is this shift between starting the challenge of looking at this tension and for this company it was, do we maintain the ethics that our company was founded with, or do we move towards a financially sustainable model that doesn't involve ethics? And we see students who looked at that tension and used the integrative thinking process to dig more deeply, to go in, to see new things, to make explicit some of these benefits that they didn't know existed, and use those as the building blocks to a better answer. And what step three shows us, this exploring the possibilities, is that you can start with attention, but digging deeply allows you to move beyond it into imagining new possibilities.